you do? You go, go like this, you go along the normally consolidated line during the consolidation, and what do you do? Heavily over consolidated means that you unload to reach over here, right? You push it down and then you unload it. Maybe the uh, glacier came and then took it away and then came over here. In the path, it goes this way and then it comes over here, but your eel surface stays there during the unloading part. Right, so, so now you're over here, you're over here, and you're over here. Let's look at the drained condition. Drained condition, it will go up, up, up. I reach my red here, right? Am I at failure? No, because I'm still green over here, not on red. So I'm still okay, so I still keep on going. And once I reach here, I said I yielded, so I, what do I need to do? I need to start dilating, because I'm on that side. So it starts to dilate means that as I go, start to go up, right? In this part, I start to go up to reach to here and reach to my critical state line, which is, this is how much I dilated. But then as I dilate, you can see as I dilate, I need to reach to my fader, which is here. So therefore what's gonna happen, it's gonna go up, and it starts to dilate, I start to soften. Because the volume starts to increase, it becomes looser. Meaning that it starts to go looser, 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 and as I go looser, it becomes weaker and weaker, and reaches to this point. Mm -hmm. So the path it will have is that it goes up as a yield, and then goes down as a strength softening behavior. So what you're gonna see in your stress relationship will be like this. You go up, which is your, in this case, your yielding point, so, so it will be dy. So it will go to dy, right? It goes up to dy, dy, and then it starts to go down as I start to dilate upwards. And therefore, it goes down to strength soften. So that will be the drain strength. Let's look at the undrain strength. So the undrain strength, <coughs> all right, so, so I'm here, start. Now test is undrain. So undrain, the undrain path is always gonna be straight if it's elastic. <coughs> so it keeps on going up, going up, going up. Again, I pass this point, but I'm still okay because I'm not red yet. So I'm here. I keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Now I yield it. So once I yield in undrained condition, but it's dilated, so right? So it wants to dilate, but it can't dilate. So your excess pore pressure becomes negative. Your effective stress increases. So what happened is that as you reach over here, you want to reach the failure, so you go this way, right? To keep the constant, to reach the red line. So if I'm going to reach the red line, my final point is over here, and if I look up here, and then if I look over here, it's over here. So you'll find out that this point, and this point, there's a little bit of deep, small softening, but usually it's gonna soften a little bit and reach over here. And this particular difference, the difference between here and here, is the change in effective stress, meaning that that's the <coughs> negative excess pore pressure you will generate. So now you can see in this stress relationship is that it's exactly the same up to here, but once it starts to yield, it will generate a negative excess pore pressure, and then here, and the reason why this is stronger than your drain condition is that this one just dilates and become loose. This one couldn't dilate because it's undrained condition, and therefore the only way is to generate negative excess pull pressure and became stronger, and that's why your undrained shear strength will be stronger. And therefore, when you look at your stress-strain relationship, your undrained one 
will be stronger than your drained one. And then when you look at 